When I started to write the book, I asked myself, why am I writing this book? Why I don't want to write this book, actually? And as a coach, we normally ask for your biggest childhood trauma. And I couldn't find any trauma. I have been considering myself as a privileged child grown with an amazing, loving parents who grew me with, with really love and care. And I could not find these memories. They were, we have such a selective memories that all these memories of war were so far away that I did not even find them. And when I started to write the book, thanks to the pandemic situation, I ask myself this question and it comes, okay, so I was born between the war. And after the war, when the war is finished, until you're growing up, the TV only shows you the memories of the war. What else do you see? And this is how you're programmed. You're living in a world full of violence, full of conflict, eat otherwise you will be eaten, competition, right? And that was all my childhood memories. And um, always I looked for solution. How can I help? How can I create peace in the world? And you know what is the funny part of it? That I thought that everyone had the same mission. You know what? I was thinking that everybody asked themselves the question how to create peace in the world. <laughs> how naive we are. We have that. What is in your mind? You think that everybody else has the same mission or has the same courage or have the same question. And we all have a different mission. We all are here on a mission. And the urge to discover that mission is in the center of your chest, is in your heart. You just need to listen to it. So I came up with so many formula for peace as I was uh, growing and constantly dreaming how can I create this utility where everybody lives in peace and happiness. Until my past crossed um, with Rumi. How many of you know Rumi? Nice. For the one who doesn't know Rumi was a Persian poet of 13th century. He is a spiritual teacher and prophet of unconditional love. I visited Konya when I was 19 years old in southern Turkey, where he is buried now, on an unexpected and unplanned trip, on a miraculous trip. You know what he said, and this sentence transformed my life. Yesterday I was wise, and I wanted to, to change the world. Today I'm enlightened and I'm changing myself. I was 19 when I learned that actually I need to change myself in order to change the world. Maybe I don't have enough bombs or guns or, or I don't know all this power to go against the big powers in the world. But I have immense power within me when I change and tap into this power, I can create a change in the world. Later on in 2007, I I have been receiving scientific discoveries. The Heart Mass Institute is an institute that researched the science of the heart for the past 30 years. And they explained actually proper scientific formula for peace, what, what we are going to learn today. And they explained the electromagnetic field of your heart how it's actually interacting with the electromagnetic field of the planet and how important it is for all of us to raise our vibration to the vibration of unconditional love if we want to create a change in the world. As Gandhi said, become the change you want to see in the world. Then I learned and I was so absorbed into the idea explained by scientists, by the best scientists of the, of the century, that if you shift the vibration in your heart, you are creating change in the environment around you. So today we are going to learn about the power within your heart. Why is important to learn it? First of all, we are living in the time of a 
history. Even if you are not coming from a country full of war or conflict, or you are living in heaven, which you are all living in now, but the, the, the pandemic or pandemic, whatever we think of, it's creating a lot of change in the vibration of our hearts. You know? Whether you believe that this is a killing virus that is killing many people, you are in fear. Or you believe that the government's plan is for you to get to kill your economy, to, to put the mask on your face, to put you inside. Again, you are in fear. What can you do? And when you are in fear, your vibration is low. When your vibration is low, the whole planet vibration is low. Because you know what? You are interacting and mirroring this vibration with the environment around you. Around every human being, there is an electromagnetic field that we can measure at scientific settings that call the electromagnetic field of the heart. 360 degrees around you, seven feet means two meter in front of me, two meter behind me, two meter on my left, right above and below, right down here. It's the energy and electromagnetic field of my heart, all of us. And we are all sharing it together. Because we are in 2 meter distance and 1.5 meter distance, social distancing, <laughs> not share the emotions, but we are sharing, we are mirroring our emotions. And the, the Earth, planet Earth has a field, and we are actually exchanging the emotions with electromagnetic field of the planet. The electromagnetic field of planet Earth is affecting us profoundly, and we are affecting the Earth. So, if we learn this information and we learn how to create resilience, then we, we have it much easier confronting the time of extreme ahead of us. Well, we are already li living in it, but it's like today more than ever, everything is so unpredictable. So, you can plan. And that is what Ben Gaia was saying, like he had plans and God laughed. And now God is really laughing. It's like he's having real fun with us. <laughs> he or she. Because you cannot plan anymore. And it's so beautiful. God is joyful. I'm loving it. It's like going on a on a free ride. You have no control of where it's going to tell you, take you. But you my dear, you need to learn to have faith. It's your, your choice. Whether faith and trust and make sure that you are in good hands or create that resistance against it. What happens if you have resistance? Fear, you stop, you want to go against the current and eventually you need to become a soul. I have been a Sagittarius, a warrior all my life. And I didn't know that my real mission is to become a soul. Of this loving energy, of this loving guidance that is around us, I mean, who am I to tell what to do and decide? I haven't decided I am the first heartbeat in the fetal development. I haven't been planning the growth as a baby, as a little fetus. And I have not been worried if my nose grew, if I have a hand. I haven't been worried. I trusted fully when I was in the womb of my mother. Like you are. And what happened when you are born? We start to say, aging God out. Ego. I am in charge of that. I am the one managing the life. I am the one deciding. I am the one running. Now, my friend, I have been through a lot, and I can tell you, the moment you release the resistance and the moment you accept that there is a guidance for you all, that you are all loved, protected, and guided, even I enjoy the ride. And now it's a free ride. So now we cannot plan anything anymore. You can really enjoy it. 